Hi students, in this video, we are going to discuss about a very important approach, which is net income approach. So this is actually a type or this is actually a capital structure approach or a theory of capital structure. So we have a number of the, uh, capital structure theories, every type or each and every type of approach is very, very important. And today we will, we will be only discussing upon this particular approach that is net income approach. So before getting into the term capital structure approach or the theories of capital structure, you should know what do you mean by a capital structure or what does it mean? Capital structure is actually a combination of capitalization. Like uh, if, you're for, if you're firm or if your uh, concern needs an amount of uh, 50,000 or say we can just take in a huge amount like you your company needs an amount of 50 lakh so how they are going to collect this much amount uh, from a variety of sources like they can uh, go for debt they can go for equity or bonds so they have a number of sources so how they are going to collect uh, the fund from different sources and about its proportion that 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 is the uh, that's the thing which we discuss under the head of a the term capital structure. So according to the definition of Gestenberg, capital structure of a company refers to composition or makeup of its capitalization. Capitalization means it's about you're calculating the total amount you need for your concern, like total amount of capital which you, which you require. Okay, so that is the term capitalization refers and it includes all long-term capital resources such as loans, reserves, shares, bonds. All these are variety of sources of funds which you are using to uh, make make up your capital structure okay so in simple way you can say that it is actually a makeup of firms capitalization that means you are uh, you're referring that you need this much of fund so how you're going to collect uh, the total amount which you needed from a variety of sources so you can go for a equity preference share long-term debt retained earnings uh, all these all these can be used as a uh, source for collecting fund for the business okay so that is about capital structure now when you are coming to the term theories of capital structure so this theories of capital structure is actually showing a relationship between cost of overall cost of capital and uh, with the value of the firm so it is making a, an idea or it is making a connection in between the the composition of capital structure and between this value and the overall cost of capital that that means uh, whether the changes in the, uh, the formation of capital structure is going to affect the cost of capital or the value of the firm in any way so that is actually discussed in a different types of theories under this capital structure so different kinds of theories have been proposed by different authors to explain the relationship between capital structure cost of capital and value of the firm so how the changes in the capital structure is going to affect cost of capital and the value of the firm that will be described by each and every theory okay and uh, mainly there are four types of theories are there capital structure theories or capital structure approaches are there the first one net income approach net operating income approach the traditional approach modding lani miller approach so each of these approaches are very important like you may get a question either from net income net operating traditional or mm approach so every time they are asking questions from this particular area either it can be based on any approaches but all of these approaches or all these theories are very very important okay so today we will discuss about net income approach that is the first type of capital structure theory so uh, this particular approach was uh, proposed by David Duran and according to him or he considered this particular net income approach as a relevant approach. So why it is named as a relevant approach? This is because uh, the, as, uh, as per this theory, it is specified that a change in the capital structure is going to affect a change in the capital structure is going to affect, okay, not the term, it is going to affect the value of the firm or overall cost of capital. Okay, that's why the capital structure decision is very relevant. Okay, so the cap the changes in the capital structure is going to make changes in a overall cost of capital and also in the value of the firm. Okay, so the capital structure decision is relevant to the valuation of the firm. A change in the capital structure causes a corresponding change in the overall cost of capital as well as the total value of the firm. So both of these will be changed. Okay, so there is a relationship between all these elements. Okay.
as per David Duran, uh, he specified that if you are using more debt content in your capital structure, that will result in a declined overall cost of capital and ultimately that is going to increase your value of the firm. Okay, so if you are increasing the proportion of debt content in your uh, capital structure, what is the result? Overall capital, overall cost of capital will fall and the value of the firm will be improved. Okay, so a higher debt content in the capital structure will result in decline in the overall cost of capital and thereby increase the value of the firm as well as the market price of our equity shares. So, if the overall cost of capital is going to fall, what will happen? Ultimately, as your cost is decreasing, there is a chance that there is a result that your value will be increased. So let's look here, when you are using more debt, okay, so your uh, the composition of your debt uh, in, in the capital structure is increasing, what happens, your cost of capital, overall cost of capital is falling and what is happening to the value of the firm, it is increasing, okay. In an opposite view, when the composition or when the uh, proportion of debt in your capital structure is declining or it is decreasing, what will happen, your overall cost of capital will increase and as a result, your value of the firm will be declined or that will be decreased, okay. So actually if you are making a change in your capital structure, with that you can actually make a change in the overall cost of capital and also in case of a value of the firm, okay. So a company can increase the value and decrease the overall cost of capital by increasing the proportion of debt in the capital structure. That means if you are using more debt content in your capital structure, your overall cost of capital will fall and the value of the firm will be improved okay that is the basic point which is related to net income approach that's why uh, he specified David Duran specified that the capital structure decision is relevant it is very important as it is going to affect the overall cost of capital and also value of the firm so as you know that every theory is made up or every theory has some basic okay so the basic they are using for building up their theories is some assumptions so the assumptions of each and every theory is very very important so when you're coming to the assumption the first assumption that the cost of debt is less than the cost of equity okay cost of debt is less than cost of equity that's why if you are using more debt when you are using more debt content in your capital structure your overall cost of capital is getting decreased okay because its cost is cheaper when you are comparing it with the cost of equity and tax is not assumed in this situation then the risk perception of investors is not changed by the use of debt. That means uh, the risk, uh, the attitude of uh, the investors towards the uh, firm is not going to change as they are going to take more risk. As we know that when you are collecting fund through debt, it is a risk for the concern, right? But uh, as per the assumption, it is specified that the risk perception is not going to change. Even if you are using more and more debt, the risk perception of the investors is not going to change. Okay, the, the risk from their uh, perspective, the, they are not going to assume that the risk will be increased if you are using more debt. Okay, so the risk perception is remaining constant. That is not going to make any changes as you are uh, going to depend more and more on debt funds and cost of debt and cost of equity remains constant with changes in leverage. So uh, the, the cost of debt and cost of equity which we specified in the beginning will be constant for that period. It is not going to make any changes in the cost of debt or cost of equity, right? So these are the basic assumptions which is related to uh, net income approach. So if you're studying or if you're going to study with a net operating income or MM approach or traditional approach, you should be very thorough with the assumptions, okay? Now, it is specified that overall cost will be equal to cost of equity if the firm does not employ any debt. That means in a normal situation, we are always saying that when you are saying about capital structure, it is a debt equity mix. That means you are using debt and equity. So uh, as per this situation, if the firm is uh, using only uh, this equity or if the firm is not going to use any debt, you can say that the overall cost of capital and cost of equity, both these are same because they are not going to use any other source or they are not using. In that situation, if the firm is not using any other source or debt, in that situation, you can say that overall cost of capital and cost of equity will be same. Okay, and as per net income approach, how you will find the value of the firm? So you can actually find the total market value, which is represented as V using this equation S plus D. So what do you mean by the term S and D? S is actually the market value of equity shares and D is about the market value of debt. So uh, by adding the market value of debt and market value of uh, equity shares, you will get the total market value or the total market value of the firm. 
Okay, so V is equal to S plus D. So the equation is very important. Now, if you want to find the market value of equity shares, that means if S is not given directly, you have to use this particular equation. Earnings available to equity shareholders divided by equity capitalization rate multiplied by 100. Okay, so earnings available to equity shareholders, that means from the earnings we will give to uh, the, uh, the debenture holders, the remaining amount will be only be uh, given to the equity shareholders, right? So the uh, earnings which is remaining uh, only for this equity shareholders, take that amount and just divide it with the cost of overall cost of capital and multiply it with a 100, you will get the value of S. And if you want to find the value of overall cost of capital, K or overall cost of capital, how you will find EBIT divided by V. EBIT means earning before interest and tax or it is operating profit and you have to divide it with V. V is about value of the firm. So uh, here we have three equations and please do note of them. V is equal to S plus D and if you want to find the value of S, you have to take this equation earnings available to equity shareholders divided by overall cost of capital multiplied by 100. Then what about uh, overall cost of capital which is equal to EBIT divided by value of the firm. Okay, so these are the major area which you need to study when you're going through net income approach. Mainly, uh, what's the purpose of net income approach? Whether the particular uh, approach is saying about the relevance of capital structure or not, then you need to go through the equations and assumptions of this particular approach. So in, uh, in a general way, you can say that as per net income approach, capital structure decision is relevant. That means if the if you're going to make any changes in the combination of capital structure, it is going to affect the overall cost of capital and thereby it is also going to affect the value of the firm. So if you're using more debt content in your capital structure, that will uh, go into, uh, that will result in a decrease or decline in overall cost of capital and ultimately that will uh, make an increase in your value or the value of the firm will be increased okay so now we are going to discuss the previous year questions from this area so this is a question which is asked for management students on december 2019 net income approach to valuation is based on which of the following assumption so here uh, or this particular question is actually specifying about the assumptions which is related to net income approach so moving to the first option, there are taxes and cost of debt is less than cost of equity. First of all, from the first part of the statement itself, you can identify that as we know that there are no taxes. So uh, from the beginning itself, it is it is very uh, identifiable that this particular option is incorrect. Okay, then option B, there are taxes. Again, you can uh, actually avoid that option as you can see that there are no taxes that is a major assumption related to net income approach and use of debt does not change the risk perception of investors so here it is saying that the risk perception of investors is not going to change that is correct uh, as we discussed that when you are using more and more debt the the risk perception from the part of investors is not going to change it is remaining same so in that sense the second part is correct but the first part of this statement is wrong so b is also wrong there are no taxes yes that is correct and use of debt changes the risk perception of investors so whether it is going to make any changes in the risk perception of investors no so that is also incorrect D, there are no taxes, yes correct and cost of debt is less than cost of equity, again it is correct. Uh, the use of debt does not change the risk perception of investors, yes when you are using, even if you are using more and more debt that is not going to make any change in the risk perception of the investors. So in that sense, uh, all, all the points which is given in option D is correct. So the correct answer for this question is option D. So, uh, to answer this question, it is mandatory that you should be very aware about the assumptions related to net income approach. Okay. Now, moving to another question, uh, which is for commerce students, and that was in June 2019. So, this is an assertion reasoning question. Uh, moving to assertion, according to net income approach, capital structure decision is relevant in the valuation of the firm. According to net income approach, the capital structure decision is relevant in the valuation of the firm. Yes, capital. Uh, this net income approach is an relevant approach and yes, it, uh, when you are making any changes in capital structure, that is going to affect the value of the firm. So in that sense, assertion is true. Reason, a firm can change its total value and its overall cost of capital by change in the degree of leverage in its uh, capital structure. Leverage means it's about the combination of a debt uh, towards the uh, towards the capital structure so 
yes a firm can change its total value and its overall cost of capital by making a change in the degree of the leverage so if you are using more debt what will happen your overall cost of capital will be declined and the value of the firm will be improved and if the debt content in the capital structure is uh, lower or you are decreasing its content what will happen the overall cost of capital will be increased and the value of the firm will be decreased okay so reason is also correct and now the question whether this reason is supporting assertion so uh, as per as assertion it is given that uh, this particular net income approach is relevant why it is relevant why that particular uh, uh, approach says that this decision is very relevant it is because it can or it is able to make changes in the overall cost of capital and also in a uh, also for the value of the firm that's why it is relevant right so this reason is actually supporting this assertion or reason is saying the reason why capital structure decision is relevant in this case okay so you can say that both a and r are correct and r is the right explanation yes both a and r are correct and r is the right explanation of a so the correct answer for this question is option a so in this video we discussed about net income approach it is a very important type of uh, capital structure theory so we only discussed about a type of theory and it's very important that you should go through the other theories as well so i hope this video will help you for your preparation thank you and happy learning